4-1 against Fevere Maputo. Torino FC. Now the Torino FC team, how they line up. The Valberto Savini, the 16-year-old in goals. Porto to Mayelo to form the centre-back partnership. Shady Akuta moves from the back into the midfield to partner Dravido Tavetti. That man, Riso, the number 10, danger man in that team. He's bagged himself two goals in the tournament. Finel and Nico Raoti. And then as well to provide that to spark up front. And coach Andrea Mengini. It's just a win away from ensuring that he's in the mix in the group and as well in the mix in terms of future participation. Favre de Maputo, Mario Jamin in the sticks. Maria Kumakunia, Mazivila and Mangana in the back. Well, Timetio Kaita in the midfield. That attacking four of Sito, Molhovo, Kumbani and Lopez. They're meant to provide that attacking spot for Magid Ismail. And if he believes that this team will do the business for him, there is that man, Magid Ismail. And this team finally shows some pride, finally shows some fighting spirit and get a win. The first win, Danki Sonyelel. Thank you, Senyalel. I beg your pardon, the referee for today. Flanked by Sipo Mashangu, Sean Olive, and Michael Koza. He's been the thick of things. Is Michael Koza, a busy man. A young man from Maputo. Just about to do battle. Home captain, Davide Dovretti. 16 year old. As I was saying, will it be the Italian invasion? Oh, the Portuguese record, the triumphs in this battle. Let's find out together, shall we? Swain Gaeta, the man looking to be a captain, the skipper, the inspiration for the young man from Maputo. I am joined by Sisu Mapena again in the commentary box. Mr. Mapena, David and Goliath. Will David steamroll Goliath? Highly unlikely in this particular match. Thank you very much, Temba. Torino expected to push on through that the primary school of course that has adopted Torino as a club in Batuhile primary school very much behind the Italian team to a point where they're wearing their colors but you all Ferroviaro are a side that have been the whipping boys in uh, this year's tournament uh, so far pretty much the same as things went for them last year but for Torino and their group they need to pick up points and catch up to Pitvers first it's not just about three points here it's about goal scored as well Temba. Goal scored that's one thing that Maputo have been guilty of letting in too many goals as Shady Akuta tries to get a first feel of the ball a shot away early on. Already the team of, from Maputo looking like they're going to be up against it. They have conceded, as I said, seven goals. Tournament record that being the worst defense. An opportunity for the man from Torino. Nicola Raouti is the man lurking. In fact, there was two Torino players there looking to pounce. Yakuniela, the number nine. And his strike partner, Nicola Raoti. Sees a man to watch out for is number 10. Or oh, the man in the room. That man, Riso. He scored yesterday as well. Scored in the opening game as well. He seems to be the danger man in terms of being the difference maker in those tight games. Well, they'll certainly need him to come to the party. They need five goals in this match. They need to win by five. Keep in mind, Torino. So they not only need to start on the front foot, which they have, they aren't quite as relaxed as we saw in other matches in finding the rhythm. They want to find it ASAP here and push on and see if they can stop the scoring as early as possible. Ferroviaro did concede three in the first half against Atletico Madrid, so they'll believe they can put a, a few past the side from Maputo. Now the man, Yacunela. Looking for Fabio Gonella. Man from Vare Maputo getting numbers behind the ball. That instance outwitted the danger man Riso with time. Straight at Mario Jamin. Was too easy. Caesar to get by to two players occupying the space. One pass. Absolutely eliminating both of them. At this point, for Ferro Viaro, you're not thinking, well, get it the ball to the opposition final third. Thinking, get it over the halfway line at this point. They have started this match back to the wall, which is pretty much the case in every match for them. Here's a young man that's been impressive for the ball here from North Africa. He gets them started from the back and from there, here they go. And here they go indeed. An opportunity for an early shot. Nicola Reoti. Well-constructed move from the man from Torino. Very smelling blood early. 
looking like they want to put this game to bed as Caesar did mention they need massive scoreline five goals to do them just perfectly Caesar has something I, I noticed from the team from Mozambique were a bit disorganized defensively in their first game they look like tears and headlights players not in position not in lines not particularly marking a man or marking more spaces than anything that did not work out well for them at times it looks as though they're just going through the motions as though they overall by the situation the youngsters from uh, Mozambique the defensive display on that occasion but well on just about every aspect of the game here the expectation is that they uh, are outclassed in the physical department they'll be outclassed and that's the expectation there's a huge height uh, difference and at times they want to play it out from the back and they just keep playing themselves into trouble wrong decisions a lot of the time wrong decisions on that instance valerio the left back had spotted that aaron ball and as a result of his pressure the bigger italian players now have an opportunity to impose themselves early not with a ball of that sort of quality didn't even beat the first man season disappointing just about every player they've got on the field in fact let me correct that every player they've got on the field is taller than all of the opponents just put it in there hang it in there hang and it, it in there indeed sees it should be a matter of time from that point on until someone bends it into the back of the net and i look at even the category of maputo goalkeeper mario jamin goodness is keep up small in stature compared to compare him to alberto savini's opposite number there's a danger man riso 16 year old attacker now here here's Fevario de Maputo looking to show that they can also play on the front foot not just gonna be here to defend and defend for their lives it's interesting to see what they would do with this set piece do they put it forward with a long one given the size difference so do they decide to play short there's your answer Ooh they should have gotten on to the end of it for Torino they went to bed then defensively and no one really committed to the ball no one committed to the flight of the ball and three pair of yard players saw the ball bounce around them and all they needed then was for one of them to take control of that situation and that's the best chance of the match early signs best chance of the match nice little player from Yaquinela looking for Gunela Rari Maputo players one senses that they're gonna have to make the best of the chances that they do eventually create they have to be incisive in possession they're gonna have to be efficient and have to be clinical in front of goal nice girl in the end that's heavy numbers there out on that far side make it difficult for Torino now for them the longer it goes without them scoring the worse it gets mentally and the anxiety will grow now here's an anxious moment look how far forward should your court has come too much space the time he was afforded to just sneak in he did mention his caliber with the ball at his feet he hasn't scored in the tournament yet but if you keep giving him opportunities like that season will eventually punish you well it's shady drifting into the space and Nogata then needed a much better shot in fact he could have taken another touch that defense had opened up there was a huge gaping hole for him to advance into he's not one who runs with the ball much though he will take a touch look up and find the perfect pass so reluctant to run with it they want to be seen a repeat too many times nice piece of skill from that man Samake just get the goals from Torino on the front foot again Time the Maputo players seem to have gotten numbers behind the ball. Tries to take it quickly. Like the ref says it's a Fevario Maputo. Free kick. And a push there from one of the defenders from Matorino FC. Demonstrating with the ref and saying, I don't know what I did there. That's the man put up. They didn't start the first game. There's a substitute came off the bench. Seems a defensive reject from Andrea Magina. Something perhaps he spotted 
and how best he can use Shady Okota because he started the tournament alongside Mayelo. Opportunity for Kavario Maputo. Good ball, but no one attacking. The players just standing still. That's a strange one. Opportunity for the young boys from Mozambique now. Coming through Amerigo. Look at a new turn there. He's always going to lose out on the physical battle. Much better from Ferroviaro, much better. They played it upfield nicely, mixed it between short and longish passes along the ground. And hey, look, put together three, four passes. Next thing you know, they've got themselves a set piece in a great area. So a quick question before the set piece. How do you beat a team that's much more physically imposing than you? You guys are slightly smaller in stature. I mean, it's slightly it's a big gap between the size difference. Passing and movement. Now, oh, they line up a shot from him from Maputo. Makoina can forget that one. And also now, dead ball situations come in handy. Firstly, for the man on the ball, you don't want him spending too much time on it. If he's not going to beat the man, it's best to keep the ball moving and keep your opponents chasing. So the combination of passing and movement off the ball is vital, but set pieces are equally as vital because especially the dead ball situation where you can strike towards goal because it's not like you'll uh, get much joy or the expectation is not for them to get much joy in corners. Okay. I don't know how many free kick opportunities he's going to be taking. This is a game as a referee. Thank you, Senor Lele. Sports a free kick. A foul, rather. But they're going to have to use these set piece opportunities, as Caesar mentioned. I don't think today any team has scored from a direct set piece. The shot at goal is a captain, Davide Trovetti. El Capitano looking to. Show them how it's done. Keeper coming out bravely. Maria Jimin, there were bodies there. So a number of Club Torino players huddled together. Not too many Bavaria Maputo players around there. Important touch. Opportunity for Torino. Ricochets of one player. Shot comes in. It was that man, Alisa Market. A snap shot with his left foot. Ball perhaps just not at the right height. Couldn't therefore direct it satisfactorily to the way the place where he wanted it to go. That is the strong point, of course, teams from out uh, in Europe. Well schooled technically and the bodies and such you expect them to play with that summer plum. There will be no time wasted. There was a funny moment there. Tanki Senyalele looked like he was going for his card. Maybe Ray, yeah, that's what I like. Nice little turn again by Lopez. That's the second turn he's been able to manufacture. Slight of weight, so when he does turn the men, he will get the first few yards on them. But once those arms get into play, they can pull him back in what seems a legal fashion. But the strength department is where he's lacking the most. But he does have nifty little turns. Come on, come on, come on, the man from Mozambique is going to have to draw inspiration from the likes of Shandong Lue. That's not a star started team, not a name that pops up at you. It's a man, good up, good looking ball. They're going to have to draw that fighting spirit. Perhaps they're going to be defending for much of this game as they're doing now. And have done it well. Now, an opportunity from the man from Mozambique to put their best foot forward. Force back though. Good idea, but we would pass. Looking for that man. Malhova. Julia Malhova. Nice little knee turn. Teresa, who's dropped even deeper. Tackle. Just to be illegal by that man, Riso. Caesar, who's coming from the right hand side and. Assume more of that central attacking position. That's where he did the damage against Bits. Absolutely eliminated one, two. Bang, he scored a goal. Opportunity for Torino as well. No surprise at Torino. The fact that they haven't worked it out wide to get crosses in more often. They've got the obvious height advantage. But uh, they haven't allowed to, maybe I should say, in 
complimenting Pedro Villarro, hadn't been allowed to work it out wide and really work in those crosses. They haven't come in at all here in uh, what's now the midway point almost of this first half. It's amazing how quickly time has flown already. It's already almost to the midway point of this game. Torino haven't been really been able to impose themselves as we thought they would have done. And now many would have thought there would be two goals or a goal up at least. But uh, all credit must be given to Favario. Maputo. Pero Vario, I should rather say Maputo. Getting numbers behind as we see here. Look how many white shirts are there. Still a ball finds a man. And it still goes in. How did he get it in there? Had to stretch. It's that man, Yakunela. Doesn't matter how they go in. Put a foot. What? More like a telescope foot just poking in there sees it the marking here is shocking second ball pick it up work it back out wide and well once it's gotten into i said it get it out wide get it in there and no one's marking really there were three or four of them that were waiting to pick it up on side before the defense reacts well by the time they've started to react better viaro they're in all sorts of trouble and quite rightly torino go a goal up they'll need to score more in the time that remains, but well, that's the only important one, the first one. That man, Yakunelo, in shot, profited from the very same tactic we mentioned. The use of crosses came from the left hand side, wasn't dealt with by the man from Mozambique. But now they have an opportunity to strike back quickly. Not with crosses like that. It's amazing how they had so many numbers in the box, but somehow the ball managed to just end up at a Torino player's feet can see the body language of the Torino players they've just scored one they know they don't have much time to score another four so they're running as those the last five minutes of the game here in an effort to get the ball rolling again they need goals they need plenty of them there's an example of the urgency in the Torino FC's game got a free kick and they look long immediately and then nearly worked out they hit the head of Nicola Rauti was looking for the goal scorer Yakunela now he come the club from Mozambique the man Kumbane. Kamu Kamu Kumbane looking for most likely a danger man for him from Mozambique. You run Lopez. Now you come Fabio Gonella. Defensive mistake and Riso has an opportunity to spot Shady. Crosses it back that time. Maputo. Team were able to get numbers and get some sort of defensive block. Oh, they could have done with a bit of that a few minutes earlier perhaps maybe they've learned from the mistake but we shall see already picking up fabio gonella he's getting a lot of the ball he's a man who gets torino on the front foot going forward likes to run with the ball and look up at options provided for him on either wings the likes of riso and samake and rauti Following one of the Roverio Maputo players. Now, the difference, of course, in the physical preparations for these lads at this stage of their careers is very telling in moments like that. Where if he was uh, competing with a man of equal size and height, such, it wouldn't be so severe, this injury, but. There's such a vast difference. It's almost as though it's an under-18 side against an under-12 side looking on from the sidelines. And I say that with respect. But uh, because of that vast difference in their physical makeup and upbringing, even the moments that don't look too painful actually are, which is the case. That's why it's taken so long to get up and get the game flowing once again. Speaking to the likes of Farouk Khan when he joined us yesterday and the day before, Speaking his brain about the size difference that we often see between the Europeans and Africans, and he mentioned the mere fact that programs and nutrition starts off at an early stage for most of these European players. Well, a lot of the African science, well, it is quite difficult in terms of lack of structure, rather resources, and money obviously plays a key role in furthering the development of many of these young men. That man Lopez, isolated, and as a result, loses out give you a good example of the uh, point made by Farouk if you look at uh, young rugby players at the same age much bigger it's what they eat Cunella looking up 
Mario Jamin with a save, heading to get down very smartly. Again, it's that man Fabio Gonella, who's changed in and found that necessary space that is often occupied that we've seen in the much of this first half. Good save, that. Brilliant save. Also worked it out wide. Comes across. Up against Rada Afuera again. So that man, Jamin. Very impressed with him in the air. Goalkeeper. Ah, he's he's an opportunity here for the man from Maputo. Good passion from Milan Lopez. He's looking for options. Finds a man. An opportunity to strike back. Just could not get it in control. Did well to battle there against the big opponent, Caesar. That was nice to see. Now that's the side of them that'll come out in moments like that. Put him on a one-on-one. -on -one. And the skillful side, the hard-running side will come out to Ferro Viaro. Maybe in structure and tactically and such they don't do quite as well. But then it was a two-and-two two situation they did superbly well. And lucky not to pull the trigger. Sorry about that, Caesar. I was about to say, here's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Carola Mereko came out and did well to shut up shop. Nonetheless, uh, corner kick opportunity for FC Torino. They hang it up again. Convincingly cleared away by the man from Maputo. They have another opportunity at a corner. The point you raise about the difference in tactics that they're going to have to employ. In one on one situations, they seem as if way faster than the Torino players. Able to perhaps put them under pressure, maybe try use a few balls just behind the Torino defense. See if they can unlock that defense that way. Here's an opportunity to stretch their legs and show that pace is there on the counter. Just slide them on that one. Best moments come when they get that combination of passing and movement, right? Movement, especially with their speed, which is their biggest strength here today. Speed. They get that right and get it forward quickly. Something is on for them. A slow build up, maybe not quite right for them. In the meantime, Yoran Lopez seems to have taken a knock. It's amazing the stat that just popped out now about fouls. Torino players and double figures as compared to the team from Maputo. That looked like a saw and perhaps deemable a yellow card in some people's eyes. That man, Shady Okota, he is in the team for that physical stuff, for that defensive prowess. Reads the game ever so well. But the young man, Yoran Lopez, seems fine to continue. I'm interested again to see how they're gonna use this set piece. Do they go long again or keep it short? Have they learned? No, they haven't. Oh, Torino are allowed to build from the back and very well that they do so. Bit of pressure though applied. Right with about Nine minutes or so play remaining. FC Torino find themselves in the pounce. But it hasn't been one-way traffic. Truth be told, would have thought by now there would be a few more goals up. The likes of Shady El Kota, the more physically imposing figures as we see here. Nifty little turn from a big man. Chopped down. By the way, while well, this match is on, we've got a match between the Brazilians and the Brazilians. Atletico Mineiro of Brazil and South Africa's version of the Brazilians in Mami Lodi Sundowns. An opportunity for the keeper. Mara Jamin was a tester for him. Had to get up all in the air against Nicola Raoti. Took a knock for his troubles. Eh? That's what keepers are famous for. Bravery. Putting the bodies on the line. He's done well in that regard. The expectation would have been that uh, Torino will hang a lot of balls up in the air. So he would have been told, or should have been told at the very least, that, look, we'll expect you to be busy today. Relieve a lot of the pressure off of your defense whenever you can. And whenever the opportunity has presented itself, he's gone out there and tried to get the ball. So far, he's been the uh, standout player for me for Ferro Viaro. He's plucked a few up the air against all odds, really, and read the flight to the ball well. Fouled on this occasion, but he has taken on the responsibility that's been put before him. That's the impressive part. I like that word you use, responsibility. Huspa, a bit of fighting spirit. He's shown it in bags alongside Yuran Lopez. Probably just two of the players in white that really showed as if 
They have that fire in their belly. As that man Lopez makes a run. Is he offside? No, he's not. Oh, he is. For a second there, I thought that man Porto was playing him on side. Oh, with the official. Sean Olive deemed him to be offside, but good to see at least those seas were a bit of intent. I did say if he did time his run timelessly, he was in on goal there with an opportunity to turn and use that pace of his. It's actually quite impressive from a Ferroviaro point of view. I think today they've had the most positive moments in attack of any match so far and argued against the toughest side to do so in an Italian side. We expect them to be so well drilled defensively. Lovely skill on the far side, by the way. The man Valario combining well with Cornella. Yes, yeah, Cornella with an mm. opportunity. Good block. Brave block there. Mm. Mazzavilla had to put his body on the line this season. Otherwise, it was 2 0. Beautiful block. Defensive player of the match so far. But they are getting a few looks here and there. Bit of more luck for Ferroviaro, and they could find the back of the net themselves. Torino are so eager to get forward and score goals relentlessly. Evenly poised is this game, and you mentioned the other game, Athletic Minero versus Masandawana. Both teams in need of a win. Yesterday wasn't the best of days for both teams. The team from Brazil getting beaten. Well at that by Orlando Pirates, 3-1. Oh, Mamelodi Sundowns never got out of second gear, or even first for that matter. More like they were neutral, lukewarm against Capriz. Never allowed them to play. Someone who is trying to play though. You're on the front foot is that man. Cornella is the post. The crossbar. Yeah, Cornella. Sniffing an opportunity. Thinking to himself, where could it fall? Where can I be? The right place, right time. Second goal season. Fabio Cornella. Absolutely brilliant individual effort here. The throw is taken and once he's going, there is no stopping him. Thought he had lost it for a moment. That improvisation with the shot that comes off the crossbar. Brilliant. That's a piece of magic there. And he's taking a hit on the way down. And as all strikers should do, Iaquanelo is a man that's following up and has the easiest of uh, tap-ins. But it's all made by a bit of magic from Fabio Gonella. Iaquanelo, his teammates should thank that man Fabio Gonella. His industry, his purposeful run. And his invention it was an awkward position to be in, but he still somehow manufactured a shot on target and hit the crossbar. Yakunella, as he said, sniffing and knowing where to be. Back the second of the game. Oh, some handbags there. One of the Ferroviario Maputo players just absolutely falling to the floor and being picked up by Shady Okota. It's turning into a bit of a wrestling match here. Does it look like one of the Maputo players shot by a sniper? Went down quickly. Quickly. And uh, while well, Shady shouldn't have gotten involved in mm. at all. So they know they're chasing the clock. The uh, Ferroviaro players know that the Torino players are chasing the clock. So by going down in such a manner, what's happening is it's eating away at the clock. And for, uh, for Torino, they'd love to see nothing more than the ball rolling again. As long as it's rolling, they have a chance to score a third, meaning they'll need another two in the second half. In the meantime, see where things are getting heated. Davide Trovetti, the skipper for Torino, getting himself booked. Perhaps he said something to the referee, Tanki Sonyelele. Unless he's the man involved with why the game has been held up. If that is the case, he's lucky not to have received a red if it's violent play off of the ball. Wonder if Shady Okoto's little attempt to pick up the play as well wouldn't be deemed violent conduct. Because he shouldn't be doing so. Leave the player be and let the medics deal with him if he is injured. Nonetheless, an opportunity for Torino to stretch their lead. Bad post. The Bolero came back. Wouldn't have counted. But man, Valerio on the back post. Throwing a foot at it. But it was judged to be offside. More warning signs for Ferroviare Maputo. Sees where. Again, all you need to really is hang it up in there. They aren't the very best in setting up stall. Ferroviaro, so he falls to a man on the blind side, no marking, just unlucky. Ah, hang it up again to the man from Torino, Rauti. That time. The last 10 minutes. 
And then from Mozambique, have been able to somewhat get the foot on the ball and take the pressure off themselves. But it's all about keeping the back door shut, though. You can have all the possession in the world. If you're not defensively organized, you will get punished at this level. At any level, in fact. In this case, it's not a case of being able to play it out of your own half. It's a case of not being able to play it out of your own self-defensive final third. They're being closed down right from the front here. They want to win it back as early as possible to Torino. What they need to be careful of is not to give away any set pieces or fouls in their eagerness to try and win the ball. But they've certainly unsettled the Ferroviaro players. Notice as well as the half has continued, Caesar. Ferroviaro Maputo players have come in to continue to fall back deeper and deeper. When the opening stanzas of this game, they will be able to put numbers at least in attacking half of Torino, but that's dissipated as the game has gone on try and tried to take that one quickly, but referee says no. I think he did them a bit of a favor. Not sure they would have gotten the uh, success they needed, but again, simple stuff here may very well prove what's uh, telling. Hang it up there and try and win that first header. Coach. Travido Doretti. Didn't hang it up, didn't hear you in that instance. Why change it if it worked for you so well? Never know. At times, they're in too much of a rush for their own good. The Torino players, by the look of it, done well. You have to work it out wide. Numbers in the box, plenty of them. Plenty of them, but will we find anybody in the maroon shirt? Answers now that man in the right place at the right time. That left hand side has proved productive. The left back for Torino. Valerio hasn't done much defending, he's played more as a left winger than anything. Shady Okota, keeper Mario Gemarain comes out again and saves his team plushes. Could have did well to sneak in a ball there. There's that man, Shady Okota, showing the other side of his game, his defensive work. Oh. An opportunity for Torino again. It's Nicola Rauti. His first touch let him down there. Sees where took it away, away from goal. A better touch, perhaps. There was an opportunity for a third. I think his teammates, a few of them, were looking at the referee for a possible penalty there. We can see the man down and injured here in uh, Shopai. But uh, he's injured and down because of the contact there was between the two. And they're saying he was a defensive play meaning if there was any contact should have been a penalty that's the feeling of the Torino players I don't quite agree opportunity for Torino to perhaps put a ball in again from a corner leading to stop the halftime break coach Andrea Mengini can audibly hear him shouting at his players perhaps telling them the same thing why not test this very fragile Ferrovario Maputa defense we have the physical edge over them decided to take it short Less than a, about a minute of this half still remaining. The two minutes of stoppage time added. It's a market. Moving over to Porto. Spots that man, Valario. I had the danger man, Gonella. Nice little knee turn. Combines with a skipper, Travite. Take it from one side of the pitch to another. This man is dangerous, Riso. Look like a bit of a dive there, though. Totally agree with you. Looked to win that decision and rolled about as soon as the decision didn't come. He didn't take too long to get up and there wasn't even a limp. He didn't even look in any discomfort whatsoever. What that was was a good piece of defending, including cover defense. And nothing more. No foul. Absolutely not. Man, Mankana. He's had his head. His hands up. Really full with the likes of uh, Riso. His clever movement, his guile, has kept him busy. But in that instance, he ensured that they shall not pass. Mr. Monsieur Riso. So many of the players from uh, Ferroviaro are pushed so far back that when they do win it back on the edge of their box, they've got no outlet. So they just kick the ball anywhere in the hope that it won't come back. But it comes back immediately. The only player they've got to uh, try and look for is a young Uran Lopez on the halfway line, playing right down the middle. He doesn't push to any sides. So it's easy for Torino up to this point. Perhaps food for thought for coach Magid Isma. How does he get his team going further forward? There is he. 
His team are trailing 1 0. The start of the game very well. Somebody who's played very well is that man in shot, Mario Germain, the young goalkeeper from Mozambique. He's ensured that his team is still in this game. But it's that man, Yakinello, with two goals in the 14th minute. Next in the 25th minute, a poacher's finish to ensure that Torino go in 2 0 at the half time break. Against this under pressure, but of a real Maputo team. It is. Food for thought. It is all about development. Joining us back is back to the football, the main business at hand. It's the Torino FC. This is Viva Vareo Maputo. An early change already for the man from Torino. It's Alessandro Fierdo Leiso. You ready to start? Yes, the looks of it replacing that man, Nicola Raoti. As referee, Danki Senyalele gets us away for the second half. A lot of questions being asked before this game. We're going to get a lot of answers. This next half of football will tell us if Torino FC do have it in them to change gears and score more than they've had. They've, ha they've done thus far in this tournament. The best effort they've done of managed this two goals yesterday. They scored two against Bumalanga Black Aces. But that was at the end of the game. They're coming into the second half already. Two goals up. Perhaps needing three. But the man from Fivari Maputo trying to make a game of it. At least a sign of intention from that man, Luis Shitoi. Nice start here from Ferraviaro. Shot from outside of the box. They had a few positives in that first half. That would be focal, or that would have been the focal point, I do believe, of their chat. An opportunity to burn up. Snapshot. Beautifully, beautifully met on the half volley then. Lovely technique. That's almost <laughs> textbook, except for the fact that he didn't quite get his foot over it like you would a cricket bat and roll your wrists over it. Bit of a cricket lessons there, Mabena. Probably were more of a bowler than a batsman, though. More of an outfielder than both of those. <laughs> we'll just go with 12th <laughs> man. Anyway, Fabio Cunella, the danger man in the first half. Great water, man. Already we see the substitutions available for Mr. Andrea Mengini, the coach for Torino. He's already made one sub. Nicola Reauti, the man to be hauled off. Fiorte Liso, the man to come on for him. Rafael Riviera Maputo, coach Magid Ismail, is yet to make a change. Perhaps just trying to suss it out and see what else his young lads can offer in the second half. Well defended there by the man in white. I do believe that a huge part of the halftime chat for Torino would have been them or for them to calm down just a bit here. Yeah. Times they looked in such a hurry, they were rushing decisions, rushing maybe set pieces and not necessarily taking the best decision. Everything was in such a rush. Now Valerio, the left back, when you could be Excuse to think he's been a left winger. The man, Cabral America, seems to have taken a knock to the face. He's in the other game. Will I be told that Athletic Mineiro have taken a 1-0 lead into the halftime against Masandawana. 
Oh, by the looks of it, Joka Bonita football is trumping Ekasi Tapeiti. Oh, the uh, shoe shine and piano. Well, it's an arm that's left out there, and uh, Americo should be able to continue in the very near future. For the time being, they'll push on it's against Tim Mania to you know. Would love to drive this advantage home. But that said, they're not losing much height. Caro Americo on the sidelines. He is quite a short man. And Fabio Gonella, the latest of taking a fading army to the face. Referee Tanki Senyalele quickly on the scene. Come, 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 and the a yellow card just as quickly. My word. There was a keen to it. They're following the chicane. Zoom. Done well so far up to this point in judging the play to the ball, this youngster. Looking to see how he fares here in the second half. He's done a great job at relieving the aerial pressure. Now that man Pichilo. The left foot. Also there was an opportunity. Goalkeeper Mario Jamin lost another flight of the ball. That man, Ferdo Lousa, who just came on, could not drive the advantage home. Perhaps unsighted by the goalkeeper. I think he went for a slight touch then. He didn't try and attack it full on to meet him with the forehead. He was looking for the slightest of touches. In the end, it was too slight to touch. Need more meat, more of a connection. Needed the connection to be more true, to direct it goalwards. Didn't need to be such a fine touch. Question, was that out for... But looked like a possible handball outside of that box. The arm looked as though it was stretched way beyond the perimeters of the uh, box. For Savini, the goalkeeper for Torino. Interesting one for me, Cesar. At the end of the first half, Torino had a few corners that they got. Decided to, I call them, interesting set pieces. Played it short. Played it in interesting places. The first time in the first half they have a set piece, a ball of quality, and they're ready. The defense of the Raviera Maputo under pressure. Mario Jemain, outstanding play on the first half. Flapping at that one. We did mention it, perhaps a tactic that we thought to use a bit more in this game. Yeah. It's like we saw at the last set piece where they had that outstanding opportunity at goal. Hanging up towards the far post. You've got the numbers, you've got the momentum running into the box, the size advantage as well. You should be dominating, but they've varied their set pieces. Even at times in open play when they've gotten out in white decisions, they've sent in a low cross and not necessarily lifted it all the time. When they have, at times, it's been way too close to the uh, keeper, then who's come and played it and relieved the pressure off of his defense. But a bit more quality with the balls in from the wide areas, and they maybe could be leading by more. Oh, nice little attempt there. Yuran Lopez was nicely defined by Wayne Gaita. Fabio Gonella now on the front foot. Good interception. They had to stretch for that one or that man was in. Now the man from Mozambique with options. Can they pick the right one? Decided to go with the wrong one. Unfortunately, a lot of space for Julia Mulhove. Best I've seen of Ferro Viara in this tournament here today. Yeah, they're losing two now. And look aside, they could concede more, but they are playing with more confidence than I've seen before. And maybe the uh, pressure of trying to qualify beyond the uh, group stages, that being lifted off them, is, well, seeing the best of them. They are giving away more fouls where they aren't just allowing the opponent to run past them. I'm not saying it's okay to be. Well, to play in an illegal and win by illegal means, but they're putting up more of a fight is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, way more. As good as they're getting, Caesar, I do agree with you. Question is, though, can get themselves on the score sheet and boost themselves out of confidence and ensure that they actually believe that they can get something out of this, this game because it's, it's going to be bon voyage for them. 
have yet to score a win in this tournament. It would be nice for them to score a goal in this tournament. Pravido Dravetti. Bring the over. Skills there, but losing out in the midfield. Now Luis Chitoy. One on one with this man. Decides to cut him. Cut out. Still has the ball. Over elaboration from him. The man Ferdo Lusa. That's not to be fooled. Initially, it was a three and three situation. Never lifted his head. He was all about the individual bits. And had he lifted his head, the third attacker for Ferroviaro was so far back from the action, he had acres of space, edge of the box, and time to take it in his stride and place it towards goal. A lovely little piece of skill from Fabio Bonella. Look, I put the markers on him. Easily drifted past it. One tackle. Try a fancy looking pass with the outside of the, of the sweep, but not enough elevation. Nonetheless, here come the man from Mozambique, Kamukamu Kumbane. Can't find full of running. You're at low pace, the number seven from Maputo. Speaking of full of running, this is exactly what Fabio Gonella has been all about. Most of this game, showing a bit of quality, finding his man. Space for Shelby Akutia. Defenders oh. finish. It's the second time he's been in a similar position. Perhaps not gifted with that knack of knowing what sort of finish to apply. Breathing, as he said, Caesar in the earlier game. Yep, he uh, had a better chance in the first half, it should be said, in all fairness, in his defense. But, well, at the very least, played across the keeper, keep it on target, keep it low so that if he does save it, with the technique he has shown, chances of him holding on to it at the first time of asking are uh, slight, meaning he might parry it back into the danger area, thus leaving your big striker, Yakuniela to possibly tap it home. He's always at the right time, at the right place, or at the right place at the right time. The famous quote from Sir Alex Ferguson describing Philippe Inzaghi, saying he was born offside. A lot of their talents, talent strikers, great talent strikers, not gifted with the most feet, rather scary of paces, scary skills, devilish technique, there are more tactical argument being at the right place at the right time like the likes of Inzik, Inzaghi people Inzaghi well in response to Sir Alex Ferguson I think it's safe to say Iaku Anielo was born just on side just barely fraction of the whole line It's going to be a sub for the man from Mozambique. So that man, Pascal Burzman. Interesting surname he does have. Interesting no? story he's got as well. Hails from Cape Town. Uh, been living out in Maputo for the last five years. His uh, parents ran, uh, or ran an orphanage out in Maputo, which is how he got to be out there. They, in fact, they followed him all the way down to Johannesburg to show their support. Helped me with the translation and uh, finding out a few things about his teammates, all of the team from Maputo, barring him. And they also provides a bit of height out of the attack, so he may aid them with that long ball forward, Brosma. Very same man who just mentioned Brosma. He's paying close attention to him in the first game, was absolutely cut a frustrated figure. As they absolutely getting battered by Athletic Madrid. And never in the game, hardly had a touch in the first half, nor in the second half. Was even, even more angry by the time he got hauled off. You got Lopez now with a bit of intent. Nippy foot to play up. Finally, they get a shot in. An opportunity for a game. Offside. Where is it offside? Isn't it? The game stands. Nice one, Atleto. Nice man had flagged them for offside. Well done, young man from. Rivera Maputo showing a bit of fighting spirit coming through that man, Joran Lopez. He's been the likeliest of the two. Being left spoiled on the turf in the meanwhile. 
the two number sevens here on the other side of the field. This time it's the number seven in white, Tinuron Lopez. This youngster's got it. Skill, speed, and when they need it, he uses the toe, but he stretches the keeper to a save where he's at full stretch. It rolls kindly for another in white, and Pedro Villaro finally finds the back of the net thanks to Luis Sitwe. And, well, it's a well-deserved goal, and, well, what it means for Torino, though, is that life is difficult at this point in trying to get the better of Pepe Spets at the top of the table. I don't know if you notice in the build-up to the goal, who was instrumented in being that physical, the physical focal point, Bootsman, he threw it to his chest, held it up, passed it on, and the rest is history. Difference being that uh, in the first half, young... Yuran Lopez was working alone with those skills. We mentioned his turns on a few occasions, but no one to help him out, really. Now you put a bulkier player around him who can, well, give the defenders a thing or two to think about physically, and you set him off on the runs, and suddenly things are different. It's not Lopez receiving the ball. Now it's Lopez running onto them. Different story altogether. Man, Yuran Lopez just been hauled off. Replaced by Novella. Yes. Day's work is done, couldn't be proud of it. Fabio Gonella now on the front foot. Oh, Two ah, men. There's a no nonsense tackle. Perhaps I think they're getting tired of being toyed with by Fabio Gonella. I think they're being tired of being pushed around here in this tournament all around. So if this will be their last opponent, well, you know, they're gonna give it as good as they've been getting. Much more of a fight here from Ferro Viaro much more impressive mentioned earlier glad to see them finding the back of the net here and uh, just impressed by their body language the way they're standing up to 50 50 challenges the way the keepers dealing with the aerial balls there's so much to be impressed about that was lacking in the, in the uh, earlier appearances from these young men from Maputo. looks like coach andrea Mijini sent something in he wants to change a few things and he just came on now. Looking for options up front. Oh, good intent, but not found. Offside is Bootsman. Bergartha to Liberti. Man about to come on. That man, Fabio Gonella. Back to Manjali Berti is already on the pitch. Takes his position. It's amazing Caesar that two of the best players in terms from a Torino perspective, that man Gonella, and from a Bavaria Maputo perspective, Yoran Lopez. They have been hauled off already. Remember Lopez took a bit of uh, punishment in that first half. He hit the ground hard on one or two occasions throughout the game. Maybe he ran himself ragged in creating that goal as well in a fun farewell in a great farewell but both of them created lovely goals here where individual brilliance was what came to the fore from Gonella as well as Lopez interesting moment there between Marco Cosa the fourth official the man has just come on Busato I know much English Mr. Busato understands I can pick up through the mics Marco Cosa saying no not quite sure exactly for what but Pusato is a danger man for the man from Torino. Scored a goal yesterday. The likes of him and Riso and Yacunelo. The likely goal scorers for this Torino team. Nonetheless, the two goals shy, actually three goals shy of ensuring that they give it was Vitz a few butterflies, a few hot, hot felt moments, a few hot beats that. Just maybe put off a bit. An opportunity for man who just came on. The Chilo opts to take it quickly, but looked like Bushato was not ready for that one. Nonetheless, it still worked out for the man from Torino. Shoulder to shoulder, the two players. And then themselves a corner. Ball in. Defending in the front post. 
Vare Maputo have yet to get a corner in this game. I think you can see through the body language of the Torino players, sees how quickly they're trying to play and get the ball rolling. Again, missed out on a chance to send in the early press. Look at how many men are in that box. A whole bunch. They're just praying for the ball to be hung up in there. They'll get their chance through the corner now. But uh, I think keeping it simple, they're just pinging it in there, putting it up away from the keeper will give them their best chance. Talking of chances. There's an opportunity for Valerio being able to get his head on the ball there. An interesting one. This is a notice. Mayello, the center back, has been hauled off and replaced by an attacking player, perhaps Andre Mengini. Seeing that he needs goals and perhaps using Shady Okuda, bringing him back to the center back position. Well, they need goals, no point in uh, well, defending the uh, lead here. What they need to do is score more goals. But it's how they build up towards the scoring of those goals, those goals that matters now. That's why they need more attack-minded players, players to offer the creativity on the creative side of the game. Bit of a surprise, like you mentioned, to see uh, Gunena having gone off with his ability in creation. Now actually looking at the back formation for Torino. Just two defenders at the back for them, but one midfielder as a shield. Absolutely the kitchen sink at it. Is that man? Yakunelo. What does referee Yalele say? Penalty. He's pointing to the spot. He's now penalty. This, I think it's a decision that was influenced by the Torino players. Yeah, he blew the whistle and almost waited and responded to what seems the appeals here. Now they're saying penalty. Lovely turn. No, can't say that's a penalty. Even if it has struck the arm, it's uh, hard to call as a penalty from that sort of range, that close, and the ball moving at that speed. But the referee has given it, I say, in response to the Torino players and their appeals. That man, Mangana, not a happy man. I have to say, that was a bit harsh on the man from Maputo. They've trolled so hard to make sure that they get themselves in this game. The man now who won the foot, who won the spot kick for Torino. Had to step up and potentially score the first hat trick for of this tournament. That man, Yakunela, the 16 year old striker. Really show the composure and confidence like he did in the first two chances he got. Will he turn that fortune? Into a goal, he does with a plum, in fact. Great penalty there. That man, Yakunela, with that spot kick, becomes the first player to score a hat trick in the FIFA, right in the future champions, Gauteng Tournament 2016. That's how you take a penalty, hits it with a lot of power, keeper guesses right here. And for me, it doesn't stick that arm out quickly enough or assertively enough in the end. It doesn't fly past him. All uh, too far, there's not too much distance. It's 3-1 to Torino. They still need more goals, by the way. Great goalkeeping here. Yeah? Two more in about nine minutes or so, season. Three more now, they've conceded one, keep in mind. I have a feeling they're gonna be throwing the kitchen sink at his men from Maputo. Because Vets will be watching on Keen wherever they are. I'm sure still somewhere around the ground. I'm missing something going forward. Uh, Ferroviaro with uh, Juran Lopez having left the field. That's true. Juran Lopez was that outlet for them. I think they've missed, they haven't used Burusman enough. At one time they did get it to him. Nice sort of piece of skill there. I'm still not demoted. Better communication that ball should be allowed to fly through to Bosma, who was in a better position to maybe possibly take one touch and fire away. Now here come Torino through Shodio Kuta. 
The second I thought the referee might have thought he would be fouled there. Yeah, yeah. Looked as though he took a little bit of a touch. Credit to him for not going down. He still looked to the referee and saying, look, that touch was enough to slow me down for the ball to run away from me. Not necessarily send me down. I agree with you then. It looked as though it should have been a foul. It's amazing the positions that modern day players often tend to decide when to sneak in the old dive. <laughs> Dives is where the most interesting one I saw was I think in TNT at the left back for Super Sports United. One of the MDC games we were doing. He's brought himself to the ground and the ball just happened to go past it. Stood up like a jack in the box. Nothing happened. It was the funniest thing ever. I don't know if you remember one Ortega. Daniel Pick, Ortega. Yeah, yeah. I think he picked up two uh, yellow cards for dives in one World Cup match and was eventually sent off. That's the only time I've ever seen it happen where I think, if memory serves me right, the player gets two yellow cards for diving in one match. But uh, had referees been more like that particular ref in that particular match, we wouldn't see it as much as we do today, the diving. And I'll tell you what, these players have perfected it over the years. It's hard yeah. to tell these players, yeah? I was to say, Farouk Khan was getting into the dark arts of such things, seeing a lot of the coaches do, in fact, practice these things, sell the players to practice these things. A lot on stake in the modern day game. A lot of money, a lot of prestige. Well, let's put it this way. Dive, no, no, last minute of before extra time in the penalty shootout. You get the dive, you get the penalty, you win or go into a penalty shootout. Some would rather go about it the easier way. Get the dive, miss the penalty shootout. There are some that are honorable though. Ball swung in and then swing up from Tilibertim. Grossman hasn't been able, sorry, the, excuse me, hasn't been able to really get into this game since that little piece of skill with the chest trap. Ever since he's just been doing exactly this, just sort of jogging around and waiting and hoping perhaps. Well, he's waiting and hoping his side will get onto the ball at some point and be able to play him to his best. Now on the ball, Nes Torino shifted over to Shady Okuta. It's been disappointing in these areas, but I think I should give credit there to the Vario Maputo defenders. They didn't allow him to look up and put a ball in. Seems to be playing more in attacking position. Well, in the first half, ball swung in. Smash the vantage home to the man from Torino. A back post. It's been problematic for the the whole game, it's a sub, Pierre Danisio from this corner, which they've been dominating in terms of corner stats. And then from uh, Torino, make that one count, they've had eight corners prior to that. He scored from that one. Now, exactly what the doctor ordered, bulldoze your way in there sometimes, they don't all have to be pretty. Put it in the air, first touch keeps it in the air, and from that, a fourth goal. They don't all have to be pretty all of the time. Sometimes you have to score goals that are ugly in using your strengths and the advantages you do have. And the aerial advantage is one they certainly do have, Torino. That was an adventurous looking run from the left back from Rivera Maputo, Cabral Americo. Looking for Stelia Timeto. Goalkeeper for Torino, FC Alberto Nesevito, Savini rather, hasn't really had much to do in the second half, I think, other than that one chance that Joran Lopez hit straight at him with an ensuing shot, the Rishito scored, hasn't had much to do really. Three minutes nonetheless remaining of this game, Torino fouling the pound seats, Very Maputo as the game has gone on, perhaps the confidence just slowly seeping out of the tiny little bodies. Oh, no, I think they're toying with them. Look at the confidence of that man, Potop. Turns immaculately. Turns over into El Niesta, that man, Shady Okota. 
Well dispossessed. I can return defensive to attack. The man from Maputo. Included left hand side. They spotting one of the players free. Good. Backing and composure. That was a nice shot from Julien Melhovo. Problem here is he was hoping. Right from the moment he realized he was through and the ball was coming at him, he was not confident. He was just hoping he's going to throw himself at it and hope it works out. Guess what? You have to take a bit more in the way of uh, responsibility, a bit more care with the ball in order for it to do what you want. Could have taken it in his stride. He had the space, one touch, and then maybe back across or played across the keeper trying to beat him on the far post or near post. But much better from Ferro Viaro. Do you believe they could have scored one or two more? I think it's been a little bit different, more so that moment we just had where you just go through the motions and hope. Almost defeated, almost just happy to have gotten there. When there's still so much to be done. Take you back to earlier game we were doing the Dura Shungu. A master class in being composed and finishing. There's the young Vit striker who bad the brace in the last ten minutes or so of their, of their game. Again, Shandong Line, the team from the east. Thinks Julian Nilhova. And again, again, this time perhaps could just give himself a favor and go on Google and look up those goals. Looking up now for the big man, Yaku. Yaku Mielia sniffing a fourth. Melario looks like as this game has progressed, has moved in the left hand side where he was so productive. Man looking to be more productive as well. The Shady Akut and a familiar position to him. Has shown that he's a versatile player. He used as a center back. Moved to the midfield now. Almost playing as an attacking right winger. He's all saying Valerio. Left back, the 16 year old started off in that position. And now seems to have been moved. Going to a center back position. Has to win a comeback. Again on the front foot. Five minutes added, referee's optional time. Five minutes for Torino to find two more goals. <laughs> Quickly taken by the man from Mozambique. Well spotted, Davide Drovetti. Shifts it over to Shady Akuta. Looks up. Spostaperti. That's true for company. Looking was that man, Yakunela. And they try to build again with a man from Italy. With the skipper, Travia Doretti. Nice turn from Riso. You don't want to leave him in positions. He has shown he's got a good shot on him. Can manufacture space. Ball from. I must give credit to the Ferroverario Maputo team. They've been able to nullify his impact in this game. He is a dangerous player when given time and space. But it's been all Yakunela in this game. Finding that killer instinct, sniffing out chances. Two tap ins. And a spot kick. Torino have created more shots, more opportunities on target for their team. Here comes another opportunity to show exactly that. Is it a penalty? Referee says no. Bit of a dive then from that man Giliberti. Why not book him if you deem him not to be a foul? Ooh. Bit of a follow through there. Some handbags between the players. Game ending. A bit of a sour note. So that man Riso. That I think was Giliberti just incensed perhaps at what he thought was a penalty. Indeed it is Giliberti. Now, Giliberti here allowing his emotions to get the uh, better of him. In the end, his uh, teammates are doing the right thing and calming him down. I think the damage though to the opponent could be quite serious. 
Youngster here looked to be in a great deal of pain here for uh, just a moment. Look, I mentioned it earlier, they've put up way more of a fight than we've seen in previous matches, and so much so that uh, at this point, he's not faking it. When a player doesn't roll around and is almost as still as possible, it hurts, and I'm wondering just how much damage he did himself, the youngster here. Looking back at the uh, moments that have uh, seen Torino take this lead, this was a brilliant piece of build-up play before the uh, finish for the hat-trick hero here, Temba. And hat trick here, the man Yakunelo, the big man. So he didn't mention in the right place at the right time. Man who was in the right place at the right time, swerving and twisting and turning, getting a snapshot away. Is that man Yoron Lupes? And then following up as most good strikers do was Rui Shudoi. He bagged his team's only goal. But it was to be all Yakunelo. Got a opportunity to bag the tournament's first hat trick, and it did so. He obliged. And then the back stick. Gardaliso. The sub came on to knock the ball in. I think uh, it is serious injury because the player has not moved. Not much movement coming from the young man. Seems he's taking a knock in the upper thigh, knee area. Looks like a sore one. Quick one to Cesar before this game ends. Have you made of Torino thus far in the three games that they've played in? And Farever and Maputo's participation in this tournament well let's watch this attack first get back to that in a moment timber looking for the likes of yakunela Liberti quickly closed down oh, chance of the counter chance of a counter indeed sees it now here they come the front foot mm. get themselves down there they had numbers flooding forward four and one <laughs> it's uh, had goal scoring opportunity written all over it but for Torino defending champions finding the going a bit more difficult to remember their opening match against Bitvis Bits where this showed a great comeback spirit but it's getting tougher and tougher I'll say what especially against the South African sides here for all of the sides in Europe so for Torino things aren't necessarily going their way all of the time now the young man that picked up the injury has been substituted here in a young uh, Timoteo I do suspect he is seriously injured and I hope it's not too serious. But uh, well, for fair of the hour, we're just happy they're able to score in this match and show much more of a fighting spirit. Fighting spirit, though. As much as they showed it, season of Pena wasn't enough. And from Torino, the defending champions proving too good. The team from Mozambique, I mentioned, would it be the Italian invasion or the Portuguese rear guard? Well, we have our answers. All four of them, indeed. Yakunela pegging a hat trick. Perdaliso finishing it off. That man Shed Yakuta, the 17 year old Moroccan, had a good game, showed his versatility, was using various positions. Did well, though. Nonetheless, the man from Maputo will be happy to be part of proceedings. It is their second year participating in this tournament. It's all about developing these youngsters. And you see some of them. Absolutely baby faces. I'm sure it will serve them quite well in the long run. A lot of this team will be the core.